Dear esteemed guests and colleagues, I'm extremely happy to be here as a speaker in Synopsis event. I'm Mitali Bashkaya, a crypto and blockchain expert with nearly a decade of experience. Today, I will be discussing the evolution of crypto regulations from their embryonic stages to complex frameworks we see today. And I will talk about the future and is, as it is uh, in a dynamic field, I, we, can, we can have a thinking about the future of crypto regulations. Uh, as a trader and a lecturer, consultant and a writer, I'm deeply committed to the crypto and blockchain ecosystem. I believe that the transformative potential of this technology can only fully realized through the informed dialogue, ethical practices, and sensible regulations. I'm confident that our discussion today will be informative and very, very productive. I look forward to sharing my insights on this important topic. I'm here today to talk about the world's crypto regulations, both past, present, and the future. Cryptocurrencies have been around for over a decade, but they have only recently started gaining widespread attention. As a result, governments around the world are still scrambling to figure out how to regulate them. When Bitcoin first emerged over a decade ago, the crypto space was through the Wild West that little not to go our side from the governments. Uh, but as the industry grew exponentially, the regulators began taking notice on it. <clears throat> One of the earliest regulatory moves came from Finland in 2015, which issued guidelines classifying both Bitcoin as a commodity rather than a currency. This helped to provide some clarity around the taxes without overbendering and fledging the sector. In 2017, we saw many other jurisdictions issue that initial responses. Japan was a not notable early leader and legally recognizing Bitcoin as a method of payment. Commercially, China took a very spectacle stance and bunt ICOs and crypto exchanging, seeding investor protection concerns. As the crypto mania at 2017 and 18, Bitcoin saw the ATH on that year uh, like 20K. Regulators realized more sustainable action was needed through cryptocurrencies and also with blockchain. Many agencies wish to strike a balanced nutrient innovation while mitigating the risk to consumers and financial systems. This led away regulations through 20, 2019 that aim to provide more structure. Uh, key milestones included US with CAC, clarifying that most, most of the ICO tokens were securities. And also FCA in United Kingdom establishing itself as the crypto industry regulator. This is the most important milestone that has been realized in the world in 2019. Meanwhile, European Union took a step to harmonize the regulation across border initiatives like 5AMLD, focused on crypto exchanges and also uh, wallet providers. Overall, if we can look at the global patchwork of frameworks that formed our C about KYC and AML, and also the market conducting roles. Actually, when we come to today, when we fast forwarding uh, to today's, we see most developed nations have put in a place comprehensive crypto regulations and the governments always, always talking about the uh, regulations that can be held by the governmental thing. While others still figuring out, but there are still inconsistencies across borders and hamper the cross-border nature of the industry. Looking ahead, international coordination of rules will be 
more important. Groups like the FATF will play a key role promoting anti-money laundering that I have shortened it as AML in global way. Meanwhile, the individual uh, jurisdictions are expected to refine existing framework, uh, actually from the industry, from the exchanges and also token providers. Overall, while regulations add friction and they also help bring legitimacy and long-term sustainability to the sector as the sector advances to so long to regulatory development in the faster phase. The current state of the crypto regulation is what I say to you is a patchwork of different approaches. Some countries have taken more hands-off approach while others have been more aggressive, actually. For example, I, I would like to give an example that uh, you, I want you to understand so easily because we are always facing uh, this kind of things on the crypto magazines. And also we are taking always this attention from um, some of the global uh, newses. For example, United States had taken relatively hands-off approach. The CAC has said that it will be regulated case by cases in every token and every exchange rate. You know, uh, some, some of the exchanges has also judged by CAC for including uh, laundering money. Okay, but they want to uh, pretend uh, the anti-money laundering. Okay, then other countries like Japan and Korea, especially South Korea, not North Korea actually, have taken a more aggressive approach. These countries have licensed cryptocurrency and also it exchanges in the, in the larger, larger meantime. Okay, uh, we have talked about the past and also the now times. Okay, uh, after all this, I would like to talk about the challenges that regulators can leave, also the token providers can leave, also exchange may leave uh, in these times also in the future. One of the biggest challenges in regulating cryptocurrencies is especially their global nature. Since cryptocurrencies have no physical border, borders, um, actually it's challenging for governments to impose their laws because it was all decentralized that we know the cryptocurrencies. One more major difficulty is the first pace of innovation to the crypto industry. Technologies are constantly evolving and also business models are evolving too. Um, this, this is the hardest part actually for to get regulated uh, for the crypto exchanges and also the token providers. Cross-border transactions are also posed in jurisdictional issues. Many, exchange, many exchanges uh, operate um, in multi-regions. And this is because of coordination between the regions, also in continents, is really hard to be regulated because you know every country or every region has their own regulation rules and regulations. Actually, we, we can say, and there is an ongoing debate on how crypto assets will be classified as currencies, commodities, securities, and or the own asset class. Regulators grapple with inconsistent classifications, but the most important thing in those regulatory things is the education. People has really big education barriers. For both regulators to fully understand the technical details, as well as to make industry players and the public aware of the new rules, enforcement can be a challenge due to the pseudonymous nature of crypto networks. Tracking of funds and identities require extensive diligence, which tax agencies and law enforcement also still have the development on it. Okay, we have told the challenges and also past and uh, also uh, the now times. Let's talk about the futures for the standardization of cryptocurrencies in very near future or in the far future. As we navigate, Complex and ever-changing landscapes of cryptocurrencies, 
one question looms very large. How can we achieve the global standard standardization of cryptocurrencies in regulation way? This is a critical issue, and especially given the borderless nature of their digital asset, it's really hard to be implemented, these kind of regulations. First and foremost, let's talk about the Financial Action Tax Force. It's shortened as FEFTF, okay? This environmental body has been at the forefront of the setting international standards for uh, actually for to make fight with the money laundering and uh, terrorist financing. The FTF, F, FATF is, has issued guidelines that have been widely adopted, aiming to bring informality in how countries regular, regulate and monitor crypto transactions. Their travel rule, for instance, mandates that virtual assets, service providers, share the transaction data, and a significant step forward global standardization. The affairs of International Organization of the Standardization, it's ISO, you know, it was a standardization, it was read as ISO, or another initiative worth mentioning. They have dedicated committee, ICO, ISO slash TC 307, focused on standards, standardizing blockchain and distributed ledger technologies, which while not directly regulatory, but uh, they want to have some kind of standardization through the cryptocurrencies and also blockchain. But most important step uh, for this regulation side is MICA, which was, which was made by European Union. This aimed to regulate the cryptocurrencies and also uh, they want to regulate uh, the cryptocurrencies, ICOs, tokens, and also the blockchain uh, side uh, with the member of European community countries. And while regulation is scope, such initiatives often have a border impact and also influencing how other jurisdictions approach the regulation. Additionally, there are industry felt efforts like global digital finance, and which aims to uh, create a global code of conduct of crypto assets. These self-organizing initiatives are crucial because they come from within the industry and also often more attuned to its unique challenges and opportunities. As you know, there are lots of uh, regulatory uh, workload of G20 countries. They have also met in, in very new uh, very new past and also they have some regulated rules speech on the G20 meeting and what is the conclusion is these discussions often set to a tone of regulatory approach and can be instrumentally in pushing global standards and as you know the countries and regions has their own cryptocurrency regulatory rules and it, it could be implemented to countries by countries. But as we know, European community, European Union community has their own rules and going very uh, in a hard steps. As, uh, as, as we know, uh, Switzerland and Estonia has their own rules for regulatory side, and also Japan and South Korea has their own rules. Now, in nowadays, United States also working on this kind of regulation thing. Actually, in conclusion, while we are sitting, we are, uh, in conclusion, we are in the city somewhere for achieving complete global standards, standardization in crypto regulations. Multiple initiatives are underway, both at the governmental and industry levels. These efforts represent the collective acknowledgement of the need for a harmonized regulatory landscape that can foster innovation while ensuring security and compliance. Dear ladies and gentlemen, as we stand as the pivotal conjecture in the evolution of financial systems, it's clear that the world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets is not fleeting trend, but a transformative force. From the early days of regulatory uncertainty, the current patchwork 
of global guidelines are looking ahead a promise more standardization and frameworks and has a journey has been nothing to be short of remarkable. Today, we have discussed the complexities and challenges from the rise of decentralized finance to the advent of central bank digital currencies, each bringing its own set of regulatory implications. We have also explored the various initiatives on the way to bring about global standardization, a critical step to maturing of this industry. At last, as the policymakers, industrial leaders, and engaging citizens, we have collective responsibility to shape the emerging landscape. The choices we make today will not only affect the future of cryptocurrencies, but also define the financial freedom securities of generations to come. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward. Uh, I will. I, I look forward to meet again in any synopsis event uh, in very near future. Thank you.